Good afternoon, everybody. This is Yoel Cortex, Senior Librarian at Ex Libris, and today we're going to be discussing topics in the new metadata editor. We're going to be showing the June 2020 release. Today is April 21, but we're going to be showing the June 2020 release. And we're going to be looking at these selected topics. We'll be showing the Always On feature, the Push to the Metadata Editor feature, which happens to be my favorite feature, Responsiveness in Full Screen, the Split Editor Mode, the Historical Information and Record Indications, the Scope Order and Mark Type of Records in the Records List, and the Templates Display Configuration. And all of these topics you can see on your own here. Uh, we've got them on the Knowledge Center. We've got a PowerPoint presentation as well as a handout. So you can follow along on your own, on your own time, look at the presentations, look at the handout. And this is on the Knowledge Center under Alma, Training, Extended Training, and Presentations and Documents, Resource Management. Now there's a lot on the page here. You've got a link right here to the new metadata editor, and that's where all of the topics are. So let's begin now with the Always On feature. We're not going to be looking at these PowerPoints and handouts right now. We're going to be looking at it all live, but you're welcome to use these PowerPoints on your own. So Always On. Always On, just like the name suggests, means that the metadata editor is always on. The advantage of it being always on means it opens quickly. Like if you have Excel open and Word open and Firefox and Chrome and various applications on your PC and they're already on, you just unminimize them or access them. So same thing here. I've got an icon here on the bottom left. You see above the configuration icon. I put my mouse over and I'm putting it on and off so you see it. And it says Show Metadata Editor. And if I click the Show Metadata Editor icon, it will open the metadata editor, regardless of where I am on the screen. Right now I'm in the repository search, but I can, I can open the metadata editor simply by clicking it. So I click open metadata editor and now it's open. We're going to be looking at all these features shortly, but I just popped right into the metadata editor very quickly. And then I can hide it. You see, now I put my mouse on and it's hide metadata editor. Now it's gone and I'm back into my repository search. So I click it once, it immediately opens. I click it once, it immediately closes. Open, close. Very quickly, I don't need to start going through menus. And that's regardless of where I am in the system. For example, right now I see I'm at a circulation desk. So if I were to say, for example, manage patron services, and I was at manage patron services, and I'm in the middle of working on a patron and loaning, returning, checking fines and fees, etc. And I decide I want to go into the metadata editor at any time I click show metadata editor and immediately the metadata editor opens. Same thing if I was at, for example, a receiving department. And while at the receiving department, I was receiving, receive. And I'm working on the receiving, and suddenly I decide I want to go to the metadata editor. I click it, and immediately the metadata editor opens. So that's the always on, as you see, major time saver. Don't have to wait for another application to open. It's always on. It's just waiting in the background for a cataloger to show them, and then it automatically appears. Okay, you'll notice some of these records which I see here in what's called the records list say they're pushed. Now, what does that mean? Let's go take a look here. If I were to come along now and do a search of some sort and I find some records, Taipei, nothing on Taipei in here, and I search Taiwan, for example, and I got 12 records and I decide de uh, the Odyssey, um, Handbook of Ambient Assisted Living. I decide at some stage I'm going to want to work on this in the metadata editor. 
But I don't want to click edit record and then go in and then come back out and do a search again because I want to keep searching. But at some stage, I'm going to want to edit this. I can say push to the metadata editor and provided I have permission, I can edit it. Now this one, for example, is I don't have permission for, which could be for many reasons. It might be, for example, that it's locked by another user. It could be that it's a higher level than I have. In any case, oop, I see I spelled that one wrong. In any case, uh, it will indicate to me what the situation is. So I can take one record, let's spell that properly. I can take one record and send it to the metadata editor, or I can take several records all at once and send them to the metadata editor. For example, here, I'll say I want to take uh, nursing research, and I want to take Harry T. Burley, and I want to take, ooh, that's a nice one, laughter before sleep, and sculpture. So all of these, if I say push selected to the metadata editor, provided I have permission, it says three have been pushed to the metadata editor, I'm not allowed to edit one of them. You are currently allowed to edit three of the four. I can also take one at a time and send these in. Uh, one record at a time, like we saw before, push to the metadata editor. So I can send one record at a time, that one was now pushed in, or I can send several. And then when I decide that those are the records I want to edit, I can pop back into the metadata editor, and anything which has been pushed, I can see here. I can see that it has been pushed, and I can start to edit it. Now, if I want to see those records now that I just pushed right now, that will bring us to our next feature. And our next feature is the various options of sorting and filtering inside the metadata editor. So now, for example, let's say I want to see the records which were most recently added to the metadata editor. So here, I'm clicking here the filter list, and I can do ascending and descending by the time it was added to the metadata editor, and also uh, by the title, alphabetically ascending or descending. So if I say I want entry time ascending, apply. Now the most recent ones that I added will be on the bottom, sculpture, nursing research, Laughter before sleep, if you recall, I said, oh, that's a good one. So those are added now at the bottom because I did ascending. So the most recent are on the bottom here. And I can see what I most recently added to the metadata editor. I can also sort these ascending and descending by the title. And now they're alphabetical. And of course, I can also search in here. For example, I want all of the records that have Taiwan somewhere in them. And now I have all of these records which have Taiwan, art for social change, culture, and anthropology of the residents of Taiwan, uh, contemporary art in Taiwan, um, science and art in Taiwan, and philosophy, feminism, and faith in Taiwan. So those are my options here for filtering. I have a lot of records open. In this case, they have 21 Mark 21 bib records open, as you see here. I want to find a specific record very quickly. I can do it by searching a word from the title. I can sort it by title, ascending, descending, and I can sort it by the time I added it to the metadata editor, also ascending and descending. Okay, the next topic we want to discuss here is the responsiveness in full screen. So you see I have a record here by chance. This actually works out. Sorry about that. Click the wrong icon. So this is a nice one here. <coughs> it's got some large 505 fields. I want to take up the whole screen here. So the responsiveness, I can click here. I'm clicking the icon on the bottom here for collapse records list. It closes, and it doesn't just close it, it allows me automatically to take the full screen with this record. And now I can easily read these large 505s, 520s. We're going to see that this comes in 
very handy when I'm in split editor mode. And I can open this list here. I'm clicking again, it says expand the records list by clicking here. Now if you noticed, I expanded the records list and that's just if I want to come and search through here. It's still filtered by Taiwan. I'll unfilter it by Taiwan. And now I can go through the list here. And if I click out, it closes again. And if I open it again, I can pin this open, clicking pin records list. And now it's open. And when it's closed, I can open it also by clicking the records here and pin it open and you'll see automatically that record behind us will immediately take the new position. Responsive. And that gets more useful in the split editor mode, which we're going to look at right now. So here I can go into the split editor mode. I'm going to click editor split mode. And now I'll take the right screen, for example. I'm focusing on the right screen. I'll take another record here, Republic of Love, and it will open on the right screen. Now I can close my records list, and now I see both of these taking up the whole screen. I can easily look at both of them at the same time. And what's nice here, among many other features, is I always know which record is focused. If you notice the one on the right, has a blue tint to the top here. The Republic of Love and it's blue. Now if I click to the one on the left, I know that now I'm focused on the one on the left. And all of the features for the record actions and the editing actions work on either record, the one on the left or the one on the right. So for example, here I can say add field and I've added a new field right here and I say I want another 246 and I can start typing the something. Either record, or the, red, the record editing act, the record actions and the editing actions work on both sides. And I can always see which ones I'm focused on. And you also see what's gonna bring us to our next topic, various information on the top. Now, the topic is historical information and record actions. So I can see the historical information on each record by clicking this I icon. I see when it was created, when it was modified, in this case by C. Doyle. And here I see when it was created, when it was modified. I see that this came to the metadata editor by being pushed. I see it's a Mark 21 record. I'm going to close one of these. And I'm going to open the records list. And I'm going to pin it open. Okay. So I see various information here as well. When I hover over a record, I can see always the title, when it was created, when it was modified, and who modified it. Uh, I also see other indications here, such as if it has a note. This is a little icon here telling me it has a note. We already saw that I see if the record was pushed to the metadata editor. And I also can see if the record is suppressed. This one's got the suppress sign next to it. So I know if it was pushed, I know if it has a note, and I know if it was suppressed merely by looking in the metadata editor. I see not only is it suppressed, it was created October 2019, modified April 21st, oh, that's today. 2020 by Laura J. Laura J. happens to be me, Laura Jackson. Okay, so that's the historical information, which is very quickly accessible. And our final topic, very nice topic, uh, templates display configuration. When creating a new record, the user clicks new. Here I'm going to click new. You'll notice here I have books, maps, music, and visual material. These are templates. There are many more templates which I can also access, but on a quick access here from the new button, I have books, maps, music, visual materials. And like I said, I'm logged in here as Laura Jackson. And in another browser here, here, uh, I'm logged in as a different user. Here I'm logged in as Hannah Wagner. Hannah Wagner sees, when she clicks new, books, 
computer files, and continuing resources. See so different ones. Books, computer files, and continuing resources. And Laura sees books, maps, music, and visual materials. Now, this is very useful. The institution may have a lot of templates, and each user only wants to see a certain subset of those templates, at least for the quick view or the quick access. So every user, as you see here, can go to the templates display configuration and configure which ones he wants to appear. So Laura has books, maps, uh, music, visual materials. And let's say she doesn't want visual materials, she doesn't want music, but she wants mixed materials. So now Laura has maps, mixed materials, and books. She's got three instead of four, which she had be, oh, let's get rid of, oh, let's leave that one because that, in any case, is for holdings. We're talking about Mark 21 Bibliographic right now. And maps, mixed materials, books. See, there's a lot of templates here, but the user only wants to see certain ones. We've got books in the Mark 21 Big, maps and mixed materials, save, and now new. Instead of seeing the four that she saw before, she sees only the three that she personally configured. This is on a user level, not an institution, not a library, not a user group, not a role. Each user can customize which templates they want to see there at the new. And that brings us to the end of our session. We hope everyone enjoyed seeing the new features as of the June release in the Metadata Editor. And we look forward to seeing you in our next webinar. Have a nice day.